Okay, what's up everybody? Uh, we have a barking dog like usual and this might be a bit more of a tedious episode because we gotta figure out how to get this to sit properly in the front up here. Which means I gotta fabricate brand new engine mounts. This hole and these holes these were the original mounts for the 88 because that was originally mounted. The road glide frame up and over here was, rigid, was uh, rubber mounted so it reduces vibration when you add idle. So I got a bit of a trip. I have a few good ideas on what I uh, want to do with it. I'm probably going to make myself either a plate at the bottom with bungs supporting it or have it right at the top and have it mounted right flush on the top there. Uh, another thing we also gotta do is figure out the height for sure. Because none of this even matters if the engine is too low and the primary, the inner and outer primary don't fit in or you can't bolt them in. Because ideally you should be able to remove those when the engine is still in the frame. So, just gotta do some measurements and we're talking literally 18th of an inch at a time. Okay. Well, I guess, yeah, 16th of an inch. I think these are 8th of an inch? Or 16th of an inch? 8th of an inch at a time. Small fractions, anyways. Uh, we got some metal we can uh, work with. I still got some uh, 1 inch rod. And also, like you see in the last episode, we finished working up the uh, base for the up tube. Or up tube. I'm sorry, I haven't even finished my coffee yet. One second. There we go. So, <clears throat> there we go, much better. Now we need to uh, weld the three pieces the three pieces together and probably get this set up to handle that much bigger of a project because the forge here, it actually isn't all that deep. It's maybe about four inches deep. And for a forge, that actually is more or less for a small projects, something like that this thick of metal really so i'm gonna have to break into my tray my uh, other trailer get some fire bricks stack those up so we can get a bigger amount of fire but that'll be later and next thing after that we also gotta stretch my frame out because when i have the whole engine component the whole engine transmission together inside the transmission is like right up into here which doesn't leave me a lot of room for my tire. So I would like to stretch this out uh, an additional two inches or so. I'll be using more of my uh, metal up here. But I'm probably gonna get my uh, bro Logan and I to work on that because it's better to have multiple hands when you don't have a jig. So I'm gonna start figuring out how to set this up properly so I can put the engine in the frame area and start gauging how high I gotta have it. Because on the back, let's see if I can get this. You can see right down here, hopefully, you know, right in here, this is where your inner primary attaches onto. So I gotta make sure down here is above the frame rails. So I'll get this uh, transmission back off and engine down, frame back on the stronger table and I'll show you where I'm at as it sits right now. All right.
160 speed for you right there. Well, I gotta move this over here for now. Nice and dirty. Move y'all up a little closer here. And just like that, and it's accessible, base, and shims. So, got to play with uh, the frame on the table. Ideally, I would like to have the tail end facing that way, but we got the device, the lamp, and the light system out in the way. So we're going to have to make do for now because right now all we have to focus on is height. Alright, I'll get you back. I'll get back to you guys once I got the frame on the table. Son of a bitch. Good thing these cameras are tough. Alright. Put the engine in the frame. Let me show what I'm talking about every time I meet the golf. Let me show you better what I'm talking about with better, with better lighting. Here we go. So you see this? Oh man, I got a freaking headache. This is the uh, surface area for the inner primary. And you see right here, even with me pushing down on the bottom rails, still ain't high enough. So we just start grabbing these shims and keep sliding underneath and measuring as we go. So if I were to take a guess, maybe one of these two at tops, grab yourself a tape measurer, which is right here. Bane my existence right there. But there we go. Try holding this off with one hand. Harder than you think. Put you guys up here. So one of these planks measures eighth of an inch. Yeah, that almost leads us up to a quarter inch with two together. Trust me. It's just to give us the uh, general ballpark. And another thing is to why I want to stretch my frame right here. If I go up higher on the engine, this is going to be touching my uh, top rocker. It's all right to have. It's good to have it tight, but you should still have a wee bit of gap. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe say that much. So by moving my frame back a few inches, I can actually bend these up once I get my down tube inserted. Bend it up just a little bit. And that will give us plenty of clearance for my top rockers here. But like I said, that might sound like a 
Logan shop kind of deal. But for right now, we're just going to have to shim it up probably one at a time. And of course, it's a bit of a handful to do with one hand and a tripod. So I'll get back to you guys once I feel like the uh, engine is high enough. And I'll show you, I'll tell you how many shims I needed. Okay, y'all. This is what I'm talking about for clearance. I grabbed my uh, inner primary, loaded it up on there, and there's perfect amount of gap so I can slap my inner primary, have my outer primary on, take them on and off as I go about my business doing maintenance on this bike. And it took, what was it? I keep telling myself what the measurement was. It was ta -ta 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 -ta, three eighths. So right from the bottom of the floor here, three eighths of a gap will give you plenty, will give you all the right clearance to start slapping your primary system on with the transmission. And I think the next part of this episode, uh, you're gonna see my bro Logan, and you'll see him in previous episodes and beginning parts of the chop. He had one to help me actually put the chop in, the chopper. Now we can finally get started on working on the down tubes, solidify some of these welds, if not extend them, if I, if I have to, and plug the transmission on and do some final measurements. I'll, uh, I'll go, I'll videotape some of the process, but at the end, I'm just going to tell you what the, it is because it all kind of fit, finish, finagle. It does take a decent eye to understand what you're looking for, what you have to cut, but that all comes with just general experience and ambition. So yeah, next time you see me, you'll probably see you know, Logan as well. Probably in just a half a second for y'all. Because I don't have ads running on my videos, thankful for you guys. Oh, am I me? No, yeah, it's on the transmission. Never mind. And hopefully my headache goes away by the time you get you get back to me. Alright, cheers. Again. So, let me go over... Uh, oh, I'm just going to show you what we did with the frame. Uh, couldn't really capture any video at my buddy's place, There's a lot of renovations going on there, super hectic so we can only do a few quick things. One of them, right up here, we solidified the base was going to be my uh, down tubes. I'm trying to get a good angle on that. Uh, so for next episode, I'm going to get us all set up to actually start playing the twist in my uh, down tube here. Next step, and this is the frame. We chopped it back down. Now the reason behind that is these slugs here. I tacked it up earlier, uh, a few episodes back. Just so I can start getting some basic layout of how the engine transmission is going to sit. It wasn't the end all be all product. Oh, it wasn't credit. And the biggest issue I have with the frame here is these slugs came stock with the frame from a Voodoo Cycle that I got from Lowbrow. I'll put the link in the description if you really want this one. Uh, these slugs are only like just under an inch long. And that engine, plus my weight, is going to put too much weight on these tiny slugs. So, in the next few episodes, I'm actually going to drill out the welds holding the slugs in. And I'm going to machine out new ones. I want 6 inch long slugs. And bigger diameter slugs. Because this is smaller than your OEM frame slug. This is an inch in diameter. I think there's about 3 quarters of an inch. So, I need to completely re-slug this uh, rear hardtail so I can properly fit it into this frame up here. Because when this, was a, when this gets all welded up together, there's going to be a tremendous amount of force going down on these two welds. Even if you have a gusset on, it can still crack and break if it isn't done properly in the first place. So that out of the way, this out of the way, and this piece coming up next. I hope you guys uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell 
because next episode I'm going to set this place up to actually start putting the twist in here and how I'm going to show you how I go about doing it in such a small shop. All right. And who knows, maybe in the next episode we're going to show you how we, how we make new slugs. All right. So thank you for, thank you guys for watching. This, I know the past few episodes have been a little bit of a scramble, but given the time constraints I have, I don't really have time to set you guys up film it all, and I'm also doing this by myself. It'll be a lot easier if I had a cameraman or camera woman helping me out, but it is what it is. Again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next episode.